Hey, howdy folks, it's Dave Brady. We're looking at Expedition Enterprise 2007.3 Hyperlinks Analog. And this demo will show how you import a SPICE model off of a component vendor's website and then incorporate that in Hyperlinks Analog. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go in here and want to start a new project. Pick Netlist, Pads, Create a project, let's call that uh, test project. Let's go ahead and fire that off. Now let's quickly let's add a new schematic. Good. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to tell the tool where we want to how we want to import for the target simulation kernel. So what we're gonna do is simulation test benches. And in this case, we're going to switch from the built in simulator to the Eldo simulator. Now, with that setting, what we've just done is set the target simulator as the Eldo simulator. So now, when we run tools, uh, convert PSPICE library, I'm going to browse to the component I downloaded from the TI site. And you'll notice if you visit the vendors, they've got different delivery mechanisms. Some of them you just download straight away off their web page. In case of TI, they send it to you through email, so that's kind of cool. And I don't know if TI is using HSPICE, PSPICE. I don't know any of that. But I do know that when I use this uh, converter utility, if it is PSPICE, it'll convert it. But also, it adds some nice features, like I can automatically add it to SPICE library. So we want to go ahead and check that. All right, so this is telling me that the... Uh, import process is, is successful so let's close that window and now let's switch over to simulation tab spice libraries and here's our new library we just created and in it you can see our LM339 now if I were just to take that drag and drop place it on the schematic you'll notice that it auto generates a symbol you know it's a block symbol uh, it's not a very good symbol in the sense it doesn't tell us what the part does, but it tells us some interesting characteristics. For example, it has one, two, three, four, five pins. And for now, that's all we really need. If I wanted to, I could use the symbol. You can see the symbol is set up. It's got the model property. The order property is set up. The pin order is set up. And then the details you need in order to find the library and incorporate the model. So, symbol's perfectly ready to go. The only thing it's missing is graphic intelligence so that's oh, I didn't really want to close that schematic alright so the other thing that we could have done is we could have come to our component and we could have said set default symbol now what this is allowing me to do is instead of making the block symbol I'm going to browse and since the LM339 is a comparator, let's see what other comparators we have in our library. So we have some. And this one has one, two, three, four, five pins. So that look, looks like a good one to use. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to map this symbol onto this part. So now I'm reusing the symbol out of our library to represent more than one part. So now if we drag and drop you can see we get a nice little comparator signal so let's make one little adjustment you can see the model property was added let's turn off the visibility of the model property name and add its value LM339 and a little more real estate let's go ahead and take that property and move it in here and then change the size of it. So let's say 0.2 and just double it in size. Kind of snuggle it in. That way we'll know right away what exactly that comparator is pointing to. Now the other thing we want to take a look at is we're actually missing a property. We're missing the order property. Don't know exactly why this is happening, but it's easy enough to add. Uh, it's, this list is in alphabetical order. So order and all we want to type here is model dollar sign what that means is take the order from the model property 
So let's go ahead and enter that. For some reason it sets the visibility on. We'll just fix that real quick. All right, so now we have a symbol set up with the properties correct. And the last step that we need to take is to go ahead and edit the mapping from the symbol pins over to the model ports. So I can take a quick look at this and I know this is wrong. And the reason I know it's wrong is because I looked at the spice model. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's see if we got anything in here yet. No, we don't. We haven't now listed. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, there we go. Now that property is up there. So we have this sub circuit one, two, three, four, five are the input nodes. And if we looked at the original source, the reason I knew the order was because TI was nice enough to include comments to tell me exactly what these pins were. So we've got non inverting, inverting, positive power, negative power, and then the open collector output. So output is last. So now that we know that, we can go ahead and take a look at the pin mapping. So in minus wasn't one, in plus was one, in minus was two, and out was five, was the last pin. TCC was actually three, and ground is four. And you'll notice this pull down list is actually fairly intelligent. It won't give you a pin that you've already used. So uh, it takes a little bit of use to get a little bit of getting used to when you're just changing signals, but when you have to assign them for the first time, it really makes it easy. So now we've got our our symbol pin to simulation model port mapping lined up. So that part's pretty much ready to go.